The Boyd Massacre occurred in December 1809 when Maori residents of Fongaroa Harbour in northern New Zealand killed and ate between 66 and 70 Europeans. This was reputedly the highest number of Europeans killed by Maori in a single event, and the incident is also one of the bloodiest instances of cannibalism on record. The massacre is thought to have been in revenge for the whipping of a young Maori chief by the crew of the sailing ship Boyd. In retribution, European whalers attacked the island par of Chief Tapai about 60 kilometers southeast in the possibly mistaken belief that he ordered the killings. Between 16 and 60 Maori and one European died in the clash. News of the events delayed the first missionary visits to the country, and caused the number of shipping visits to fall to almost nothing over the next few years. Background the Boyd was a 395-ton brigantine convict ship that sailed in October 1809 from Australia's Sydney Cove to Fongaroa on the east coast of New Zealand's Northland Peninsula to pick up Kauri spars. She was under the command of Captain John Thompson and carried about 70 people. The ship carried several passengers including ex-convicts who had completed their transportation sentences and four or five New Zealanders who were returning to their homeland. Among the latter was Tara, or Tara, known to the crew as George, the son of a Maori chief from Fongaroa. Tara had spent more than a year on board different vessels that included a sealing expedition to islands in the Southern Ocean. On the Boyd he was expected to work his passage on the ship. Some accounts state that he declined to do so because he was ill or because of his status as a chief's son. Another account states that the ship's cook accidentally threw some pewter spoons overboard and accused Tayara of stealing them to avoid being flogged himself. Alexander Berry, in a letter describing the events, said, The captain had been rather too hasty in resenting some slight theft, whatever the reason. The result was that the captain deprived him of food and had him tied to a capstan and whipped. This treatment of Tayara prompted him to seek UTU, or revenge. Tayara regained the confidence of the captain and persuaded him to put into Fongaroa Bay, assuring him that it was the best place to secure the timber he desired. Upon reaching Fongaroa, Tayara reported his indignities to his tribe and displayed the whip marks on his back. In accordance with Maori customs, they formed a plan for UTU. Under British law, whipping was the common punishment for minor crimes. A British person could be legally hanged for stealing goods to the value of five shillings. In Maori culture the son of a chief was a privileged figure who did not bow to an outsider's authority. Physical punishment of a chief's son, though justified by British law, caused the chief to suffer a loss of face and to Maori this warranted a violent retribution. Killings Three days after the Boyd's arrival the Maori invited Captain Thompson to follow their canoes to find suitable Kauri trees. Thompson, his chief officer and three others followed the canoes to the entrance of the Kareo River. The remaining crew stayed aboard with the passengers, preparing the vessel for the voyage to England. When the boats were beyond the Boyd site the Maori attacked the Pakeha, killing all with clubs and axes. The Maori stripped the western clothes from the victims and a group donned them as disguise. Another group carried the bodies to their par to be eaten. At dusk the disguised group manned the longboat, and at nightfall they slipped alongside the Boyd and were greeted by the crew. Other Maori canoes awaited the signal to attack. The first to die was a ship's officer. The attackers then crept around the deck, stealthily killing all the crew. The passengers were called to the deck and then killed. Five people hid up the mast among the rigging, where they witnessed the dismembering of their friends and colleague bodies below. The next morning the survivors saw a large canoe carrying Chief Tapai from the Bay of Islands entered the harbour. The chief had come to the area to trade with the Fungaroa Maori. The Europeans called out to Tapai's canoe for help. 
After Taipai had gathered the survivors from the Boyd, they headed for shore, but two Fongaroa canoes pursued them. As the survivors fled along the beach, Taipai watched as all but one were caught and killed by the pursuers. European survivors Five people were spared in the massacre. Anne Morley and her baby, in a cabin, apprentice Thomas Davis, hidden in the hold, the second mate, and two-year-old Betsy Broughton, taken by a local chief who put a feather in her hair and kept her for three weeks before rescue. The second mate was killed and eaten when his usefulness in making fish hooks was exhausted. Destruction of the Boyd the Fongaroa Maori towed the Boyd towards their village until it grounded on mudflats near Motiwai. They spent several days ransacking the ship, tossing flour, salt pork, and bottled wine overboard. The Maori were interested in a large cache of muskets and gunpowder. About 20 Maori smashed barrels of gunpowder and attempted to make the muskets functional. Chief Pio Pio sparked a flint. This ignited the gunpowder, causing a massive explosion that killed him and nine other Maori instantly. A fire then swept the ship igniting its cargo of whale oil. Soon all that was left of the Boyd was a burnt-out sunken hull. Maori declared the hull tapu, sacred or prohibited. Rescue. When news of the massacre reached European settlements, Captain Alexander Berry undertook a rescue mission aboard the city of Edinburgh. Berry rescued the four survivors, Mrs. Anne Morley and her baby, Thomas Davis, and Betsy Broughton. The city of Edinburgh crew found piles of human bones on the shoreline, with many evincing cannibalism. Captain Berry captured two Maori chiefs responsible for the massacre, at first holding them for ransom for the return of survivors. After the survivors were returned, Berry told the chiefs that they would be taken to Europe to answer for their crimes unless they released the Boyd's papers. After the papers were given to him, he released the chiefs. He made it a condition of their release that they would be degraded from their rank and received among the number of his slaves. Although he never expected this condition to be complied with, they expressed gratitude for the mercy. Berry's gesture avoided further bloodshed, an inevitability had the chiefs been executed. The four people rescued were taken on board Berry's ship bound for the Cape of Good Hope. However, the ship encountered storms and was damaged, and after repairs arrived in Lima, Peru, Mrs. Morley died while in Lima. The boy, called Davis or Davison, went from Lima to England aboard the Archduke Charles and later worked for Berry in New South Wales. He drowned while exploring the entrance to the Shoalhaven River with Berry in 1822. Mrs. Betsy Broughton married Charles Throsby, nephew of the explorer Charles Throsby, and died in 1891. Aftermath in March 1810, sailors from five whaling ships launched a revenge attack. Their target was the island pa belonging to Te Pahi, the chief who apparently tried to rescue the Boyd survivors and then saw them killed. Te Pahi had later accepted one of the Boyd's small boats and some other booty, and his name was confused with that of Te Puhi who was one of the architects of the massacre. This was the belief of Samuel Marsden, the prominent early missionary who said it was Te Ara and his brother Te Puhi who took the boy as revenge. In the attack between 16 and 60 Maori and one sailor were killed. Te Pahi, who was wounded in the neck and chest, realized that the sailors had attacked him because of the actions of the Fongaroa Maori. He gathered his remaining warriors and attacked Fongaroa, where he was killed by a spear thrust some time before April 28. News of the Boyd massacre reached Australia and Europe, delaying a planned visit of missionaries until 1814. A notice was printed and circulated in Europe advising against visiting that cursed shore of New Zealand at the risk of being eaten by cannibals. Shipping to New Zealand fell away to almost nothing during the next three years.